talking about big money, can a PowerPoint presentation bring peace to West Asia? At least that's the hope of Jared Kushner, the son-in-law and top advisor of US President Donald Trump. He presented a business plan, one that promises to turn Gaza into Singapore. As expected, very few people are convinced with Kushner. Our West Asia correspondent Daniele Pagani has a story. Business is what drives businessmen's efforts. And Jared Kushner, senior advisor to the US president and mastermind of the much-awaited deal of the century, makes no exception. Jared Kushner, he opted for a business-first approach to solve the Israel-Palestine decade-long conflict would succeed where other failed. For too long, the Palestinian people have been trapped in an inefficient framework of the past. The priest to prosperity vision is a modern framework for a brighter and more prosperous future. It is a vision of what is possible with peace. Peace to prosperity is the economic leg of the deal of the century, and it is no doubt an appealing and ambitious detailed business plan aimed at lifting life conditions of millions of Palestinians among the many proposals. The plan pledges to implement high-speed connectivity, it pushes on developing e-government transparent mechanisms, and among the many infrastructures, it plans there's a five billion US dollars travel corridor from Gaza to the West Bank. The plan says the Gaza Strip could become a wealthy gateway on the Mediterranean, the equivalent of a West Asian Singapore. Kushner acknowledges the enormity of the task, which requires investments worth 50 billion US dollars. Saudi Arabia's Ministry of State, Mohammed El Sheikh, was among the most vocal supporters. And if we managed to do it 25 years ago with significantly less money, I'm pretty sure that it can be done today with the amounts of money and with the private sector participation uh, if we can achieve that hope of peace. Yep. Uh, for everybody to start working together to achieve what we're trying to achieve. But in general, the conference has been welcomed by a wide skepticism across the Arab world. Morocco, Egypt and Jordan sent minor delegations. Lebanon and Iraq boycotted it. Gulf countries said they will decide after the actual plan. The Israeli government was not invited and the Palestinian leadership is boycotting it. It won't be easy to find investors willing to foot a bill for which Washington is not keen at the moment to put any money. But the real challenge is that many believe a peace agreement is the precondition to any plan. Jared Kushner knows it too. To be clear, economic growth and prosperity for the Palestinian people are not possible without an enduring and fair political solution to the conflict. One that guarantees Israel's security and respects the dignity of the Palestinian people. However, today is not about the political issues. We'll get to those at the right time. The Israel-Palestine conflict is the longest standing unresolved dispute in the world. More than anything else, Palestinians want an independent state running along the 1949 armistice lines. For Israel, this is off the table. They say it is too dangerous. The Palestinian leadership would be incapable of guaranteeing Israel's security and may favor terror attacks. An independent Palestine would also require the 600,000 Jewish settlers living on land Israeli military occupied after winning the war in 1967 to leave. No Israeli government would take a choice against its own people. Palestinians demand the right for the more than 5 million refugees living scattered across West Asia to return to their properties which have been confiscated, another no-no for Israel. And then there's the status of the city of Jerusalem. Israelis claim it is their holy, eternal, undivided capital city since 3,000 years. But so do the Palestinians and millions of Muslims all over the world. Historically, the most pragmatic approach to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has been the so-called two-state solution. Two different and independent states for two different and independent people, Israel and Palestine. But it does not seem that this approach has space within the frame of the deal of the century and nor within the frame of any other international negotiations. Many have failed where Jared Kushner is trying to succeed, but the White House is made in this very moment of deal breakers and they might stand a chance. Daniele Pagani, reporting from Jordan for Vion World is One.